Hey guys, I'm Julian, and today I'm going to be doing a little unboxing and overview of the ReadyMade RC Mantis 5.8 GHz FPV video receiving unit. And the Mantis is new. Um, I haven't seen all that many videos out about it, so I figured that since I just got mine, I'd make a video about it. Um, I've already opened this, uh, but I wanted you guys to see a true representation of what you'd find if you were to buy one and open the box. So... We're going to start out, just look at what's on here, see what's on the back. Uh, one thing that's interesting, if you look right here, you'll see it says, if my camera will focus, it says SMA or RPSMA. Which one is it? Uh huh. That's, that's very important because if you try and plug an RPSMA antenna into a SMA video receiver, it's going to be a little bit troublesome. Um, so let's go ahead and open this up. Make sure make sure that you buy the right one, by the way, SMA versus RPSMA. So when you first open it up, you just slide it out uh, of the box, and you get the receiver right here. It's really small. If you have, like, an immersion RC 600 milliwatt transmitter, or if you have, like, one of the ready-made RC crickets, this is actually kind of comparable in size to this. In fact, before we do anything else, let me go ahead and compare. So I've got a Cricut right here mounted in my VAS Wraith Micro. And you can see this is the size of the Cricut. And putting the Mantis right next to it, it's a very small video receiver. In fact, if I were to take my goggles down from the shelf, and excuse the bounciness, I don't really have a very good way of mounting my camera right now. And if I were to take this down from the shelf, you can see the goggles... I could just plop the video receiver on there, no problem, and it will mount without an issue. So if you're looking for something that, that's a portable video, video receiver, the Mantis is the smallest one that I've seen yet. Um, but if it doesn't perform very well, then there's not really a whole lot of point in having it. But if you're looking for something that's small, I'd say the Mantis is pretty much as small as it gets. So let's actually go on to what's in the rest of the box. We'll put this aside and come back to it a little bit later. So onto the box... Well, first of all, you've got this like this nice little patty foam stuff. Some people like to save this and use it for, for battery mounting or for other stuff um, and chop it up. We'll throw it away for now. And then underneath, you get all your wires, these things. I, I have these stabbed in one of my ceiling decorations overhead. I'll, I'll, I might give you guys a little pan of my workshop area in a second, but I don't use these. I don't think anybody does. I highly recommend these antennas if anybody's in the market for good... Uh, for, for good circularly polarized antennas. These things, nobody wants to use them, and highly recommend the Cyclone or the Triumph antennas from Video Aerial Systems. Alright, so we've got this antenna, then we've got a power cord. JST, JST is very convenient. Um, some people are moving to XT30s, but J JST, pretty much everybody has a JST um, battery. Um, and then you get a small little I, I think it's 3.5 millimeter um, jack, and you get 7 to 13 volts input, so that plugs in pretty simple. I mean, the connection doesn't feel loose or anything. And this, this is pretty long. Um, I can measure it, actually. Hold on, I'll be right back. This cable is 36 inches. Alright, and then we get our AV cables, and I am, I, I got some issues with this. Not that the cable itself is bad, but okay, first of all, this is tiny. This is not 3.5 millimeters, and if you have goggles or if you have anything, you'll know that you normally run a 3.5 millimeter AV jack. This is small. This, this won't fit in your goggles. And the Mantis does not have a jack in here, a port that accepts a 3.5 millimeter video. It's only this tiny, I think it's 1.2 millimeter or whatever the smaller video thing is, but yep, that's what you get. And I, I don't know, I mean, I feel like they could have gone for a 3.5 millimeter jack without too much of a fuss, but it's just a little bit of a pain that, that you know, everybody has these 3.5 millimeter AV jacks, and uh, I... This is the only one of the 1.2 millimeter jacks that I have because it came with the Mantis. Um, so, but it plugs in fine. And if you're just going to be plugging it into your television, then these RCA leads are fine. But if you buy this to plug it into your goggles, 
then guess what? The goggles don't accept RCA leads, and you have to use a male to female or female to 3.5 millimeter RCA cable lead in order to get it to plug into your goggles. And that's just a little bit of a pain hooking up multiple extensions. And so see, there you go, it just plugs into the side there on your goggles. But I, I, don't, I don't know, I feel like if you have a 3.5 millimeter to 3 point to, to 1.2 millimeter, millimeter lying around, then that's not going to be a problem because you can just plug in the 3.5 millimeter into your uh, goggles and then plug the 1.2 millimeter into the Mantis. But I don't know. I mean, it's just a little bit more of a hassle that that I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting it to be 3.5 millimeter or or uh, or not or give you give you an adapter so you can use it with your goggles. But RCA. Lots, lots of people have RCA, so that's the one gripe that I have with it so far. Um, and then you also get a tiny little, tiny little manual on it. I mean, basic stuff, you know. Uh, it says, single press to change channel, press and hold to change band, frequency table for reference. And the frequency table, actually, this, this is a, a nice thing. On the back of the video receiver... They have a full frequency table out for you, which I think is really nice because, like, you know, you'll be at the field or you'll be flying with a group of people and somebody's like, what channel are you on? And you don't know. So this, very handy. You always have a channel chart with you, um, which, which I think is great because you can really identify stuff. Now, Mantis is 40 channels. You get A, B, E, F, and R. Race band, lots of people are loving race band these days, um, and it's super simple operation, you know, just press the button once in order to change the channel, press and hold to change band, and I'll actually plug that in and show you guys really quick how this works. It's good to get in the habit, even though video receivers won't fry if you don't plug them in, if, if, if you plug them in without an antenna on, it's always good to get in the habit of always having an antenna on any exposed SMA connectors just because that way if you're it, it, it's good it's a good habit to build so that you never accidentally turn on your video transmitter without an antenna on so I just do it anyway so plug it in you guys can see I'm not sure if you can see that but it'll start it, it, if you're first plugging in it'll start on band a channel one um, I've messed around with it a little bit obviously and so I'm just going to show you press once changes channel hold for about two seconds and changes the band. Uh, press to change channel, double press, press a lot of times, and it'll just keep changing the channel, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, so three, four, three, four seconds to change the band, um, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the only things that you get on it are, are, as I said, is you get, you know, you get the, the button, you get the power input, and the two AV outs, um, and I guess that's so that you can have one AV out running to your television and another AV out running to your goggles, or two AV outs running to two different goggles if you want to have a passenger. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's pretty simple. One thing that I really do like about the RMRC, about the, about the, the ready-made gear, is is, is the, the blue case and these mounting holes. Um, having the mounting holes in the blue case, it really just helps to make it look look nice and snazzy. It's easily identifiable, and you're, you're not you're, if you like drop it or if you get into a crash, you're not really going to break any components. Um, and I'm and that that's more significant on the crickets is that they've got this this nice blue metal case, um, and that that ha helps with the heatsink too. But you know you'll find units either transmitter units or, or receiver units that that aren't that are just exposed, they're not cased, and so that's one thing that I really do like about this. This is, if I can remember correctly, it was 40, in fact, I have the invoice right here, so let me pull it out really quick. This was a total of, never mind, it doesn't actually say down there, but I, I think it's like 43 bucks for this, um, and, you know, 43 bucks, that's, if, if you're comparing it to immersion gear, it's going to be way more expensive. If you're comparing it to, like, an Ish, to like an Ishin RC832, it's going to be more expensive. The, the immersion stuff is more expensive than this. The Ishin stuff is cheaper than this. With ReadyMade RC, you get good customer support. It's based in the U.S. So you get really fast shipping. Um, 
I mean, it, it's up to you. If, 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 if you want to give it a go, I think that one of the really big advantages to this is the tiny size, even though the tiny cables that they give you might be a little bit of a downside. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's up to you. I'm, I'm not really going to pass judgment on it until I've flown with it, but what I will do is, right now, let's just take it apart and see what's inside. Um, there are four screws on the back of the case. It should come off pretty easy. Yeah, let's, let's see what's up. And the reason that I ordered this really was just because it's tiny. Um, and I do like how ReadyMade RC does their stuff. They, they, m m most of the transmitters that you'll find is the base model, the FX-T922 or whatever the, the one is. You know, Lumineer sells rebranded ones. The ReadyMade RC crickets are rebranded ones. But ReadyMade, um, I, from what I understand, they, they have a few uh, components that they've changed on the board uh, to make it higher quality somewhat. So, you could call me a fanboy. Ah, uh, alrighty. Sorry about that. My my SD card filled up really quick. But as I was saying, we got the four screws off on the back, and we should be able to just lift up. There we go. Pretty simple. On the back, you just got a little window for the for the lights to shine through, and a little hole for the push button. Fairly straightforward. Then getting the guts of it. Move this out of the way just so it's not distracting anybody in the shop. Um, looks. I mean, I'm 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 not a circuitry expert, so I'm not going to go over go over it. But it's it's kind of what you'd expect. You got the receiver module on the back here. This this little can on the side. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. It might be for power. Um, but this is this is for the receiver. Um, and you got the push button here. In fact, I see a model number. Can you see it? I don't think it's going to focus, but it says FX799R. So like I was saying about the, the rebranded FX99T models, um, for the transmitters, I think this is... I, it, interesting, this is the first... The first really tiny video receiver I've seen. Maybe we'll start to see more of them. But here are the here are the SMA connection points. Um, you're not going to be stressing these at all. Just using it as a ground station. I don't think so. There's there's really no need to worry about that. These capacitors. I'm guessing they're just for for the for the AV inputs on either side. Um, I could trace it, but I'm not going to go at it with a microscope or anything. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like... I mean, I, I know, looking at it now, the I, I know that the that the 35 millimeter jacks would be significantly bigger to fit on here. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have been willing to have a slightly larger, larger receiver if they'd put in 3.5 millimeter instead of the 1.2. Just my... Just, just my two cents. Um, other than that, it looks pretty straightforward. You got the LEDs up here for the uh, and the capacitors for for the channel and band indicator. Um, and yeah, I, I, I guess that's pretty much everything. You know, you got the the receiver module here on the back. This little tin, I'm not sure what it's for. If anybody has an idea, shout it out to me. And that's about it. Um, I guess I'll put it back together. I I I, I do like this. This little thing on the back, I think that's really handy. Um, but I'm not going to talk too much more about it until I actually get flying with it. I'll get this back together. Yeah, I mean, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I like... I, I, I was really surprised by how small it was. I don't think it was going to be this small. I mean, obviously, you can read the specs online and mark it out, but you're like, nah, they're probably exaggerating a little bit. But no, it's... It is very much very much the small size they claimed it to be um, so that that that's really impressive I mean obviously not going to take up any space having a ground station your antenna will most likely be as large if not larger than this so I mean it's a it's a good little addition to my collection so I'll have to see how it actually turns out in terms of flying um, and I'll try and get a full review video up and get some DVR video, um, uh, just do like a comparison, maybe with the module and the fat sharks to see 
how and, and the module in the sky zones to see how how good or bad this little receiver unit is. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention really quick. As I would said, on the back of the box, it, it seems a little bit confused as to whether it's a SMA or an RPSMA. This is very much an SMA, um, and I can all of my antennas are SMA, so you take a look here. SMA is antenna, center pin, receiver, or video transmitter, hole. And so goes together right like that. And you got I mean and you can see like how big the antenna is compared to the compared to the to the receiver. It's <laughs> this this thing really is tiny. Alright. More videos in the pipeline. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy flying.